Why do modern church buildings look like hell? I'm not using profanity, by the way. They are actually patterned to look like the Bible description of hell. Let's look about a few things here. Hell is, according to the scriptures, number one, it is dark. The Bible calls it outer darkness. Number two, hell is um, a place of burning. People go there. It's not the grave. It's not some kind of a thing where people just kind of are there and they just cease to exist. No, there's flames. There are burning down there. Hell is um, tied into burning. You have brimstone. Hell is fire and brimstone. Okay. I'll, I'll just say brimstone and fire because I forgot to write fire there first. But what is brimstone? Brimstone is your Bible word for sulfur. Hmm. You say, wait a second here. You can prove it wrong right here because you said it's dark, but here you say it's fire. Can't be dark if there's fire. Actually, yes, it can be because brimstone puts off or sulfur puts off a very, almost an invisible flame. Hmm. If there's some impurities, you might get kind of a purple flame. Remember that for later. Very interesting, a purple flame. So it would be dark down there. Hell is a, a place of torment. The Bible describes it as weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. Why? Because the people realize how easy it would have been to get out of there. They realize they didn't have to go there. You see, uh, the worst type of torment is when something bad happens and you realize it's your fault. Pretty terrible. Hell, number five, is separation from God. You know that you're down there because you rejected the Lord Jesus Christ with your life. And by the way, the uh, brimstone and fire... Um, is also connected to the smoke of their torment. A lot of people like to fill their uh, homes with smoke, different types of smoke, pipes and things like that. Hmm. Hell is all these different things here. And you could probably add some more to the list. If you can think of any, put them in the comment section down below. But I'm going to show you some pictures here and some video without audio um, of modern churches and they have a thing for using pyrotechnics flames and dark uh, interiors and you know there's a, a thing here I'll show you this guy as he's preaching and you can see the the auditorium or whatever there the stage where he's at and there's purple lighting with smoke coming out almost like purple flames um, what happened to the standard old type of church buildings where you go in there and it's very well lit and it looks nice and happy and cheery and whatever? And now these modern churches, they're literally painting the interiors black and they're filling them with lots of loud noise. And the people, they don't sing in a truly proper, harmonious type of a way. They'll draw out their, their, uh, their singing almost... Uh, seductively almost like a like they're you know wailing they don't sing holy 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 they'll say holy and they, they draw it out like that holy, holy, holy. hmm wonder if there's some spiritual things going on here of course there is let's go to john chapter 3 i'll show you why these people want their church buildings to be black and dark. John chapter 3, verse 16 through 21. Should be the most familiar verse for most people. At least it was in the past. Now people are so pagan anymore, especially here in America, that they don't even know John 3.16 anymore. <clears throat> the Bible says, King James Bible, 
For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Pretty simple. Verse 17, For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. Uh, again, this sermon here, I'm, a, I'm exposing things as being evil. Right? But I'm not being judgmental or condemning. I'm trying to say, okay, if you're in this system of the modern church thing and you're going to hell, uh, you can get out of there. And you need to get out of there. Verse 18, I mean, no different than a doctor coming and you go to the doc doctor and the doctor tells you that you're sick or that you have something wrong with you, but he can heal you. See, uh, it's not really that he's condemning you. He's just simply saying you have something wrong and I'm here to help. That's what my job is a preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ, I'm telling you, you have something wrong. If you're part of these modern churches, you need to get out of there. And I can show you the way to do it. Verse 18, He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation. Okay? That light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. You wonder why these modern churches, they have dark interiors because their deeds are evil. That's the only reason. Oh well, no, it, it helps out with the lighting thing. and it, Our laser lights show up much better than if we had lots of windows and things. Uh, no, your deeds are evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest that they are wrought in God. You know, I have lighting here, and I want to have good lighting so I can read the scriptures. But you see these people that go to these modern churches, they don't even carry Bibles. I've been to them. I used to go to these modern churches. I was a modern Christian in the past, and I got out of that system because the truth was not there. It was a lie. The truth wasn't in the conservative uh, IFB churches that I was attending. It wasn't in the modern churches. Where was it? In the pages of the King James Bible, that's where it was. And you start to read the King James Bible and you realize, wait a second, there's no Sunday best in here. There's no rock music or, or praise and worship teams or going out door to door or school bus ministries or rock concerts or movie night or whatever. This stuff isn't there. Hmm. Maybe I should uh, try to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Be a good idea. Matthew chapter 25. Turn to the book of Matthew, chapter 25, and verse 30. The Bible says, And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth, a place of torment. Hmm. And you know the interesting thing, too? These modern churches, there's a, it's a place of torment. People that go there, they have all kinds of mental problems. A lot of them, them are on antidepressants. They're, they've got all kinds of issues. And that's why they go to these modern churches, because it makes them feel good. It's like a guy doing drugs or a guy drinking alcohol or some other kind of thing like that. It's a pleasure. It's a dopamine hit. You go into these church buildings and they, they have the music and they, they get you going and you put your hands up and, oh, and everything. Yeah, that's what it is. It's wickedness. First John chapter 1. You have to go to the Scriptures. Find comfort in the Scriptures, not in fake religion. 1 John chapter 1. I'm sorry, first, yeah, 1 John chapter 1, verses 5 through 10. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Do you realize heaven is going to be light all the time? It's never night there. Hmm. Uh, do you like the night? Do you like darkness? Do you feel comfortable going into one of these satanic centers, these church buildings, and sitting down there and it's all dark and everything? You look 20 or 30 feet over that way, you can't even see the people, you know, their faces in great detail unless the laser lights are going or the flame, the pyrotechnic fire is shooting up, then you can see them over there. I don't know how people can think that that's right. But God is light. God wouldn't go into a place like that. Hmm. Verse 6, if we say that we have fellowship with him, 
God in other words, and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. The Bible talks about God being on the outside of the churches there in Revelation chapter 3. He's standing at the door knocking. He wants to have fellowship. He's saying, come out. Come on out here. Get out of that dark building. Come on out here into the light, the glorious light, natural lighting. Actually good for you. You need to be in natural lighting. God's saying, come on out. Come on out. I want to have fellowship with you. <clears throat> Verse 7, And the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanseth us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make Him a liar, and His word is not in us. Huh. So you have verse 8, the truth is not in us. Down here, verse 10, the, His Word is not in us. What does that mean? You say, I just want to know the truth. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy Word is truth. John 17, 17. One of the key verses of this ministry. The Word of God is what will lead you into the truth. Reject this ministry. Do whatever you want to do. But this is the book. This is God's book. You walk in the light by reading the scriptures. Thy word is a light, the Bible talks about. If you love God, you'll abide by this book. The light of the scriptures will pour into your life, and you'll start to realize things that are bad and displeasing to the Lord, and you'll say, you know what, I'm getting away from these modern churches. But if you don't like the light of God's word being in your life, then you'll say, I want to run from that book. Get that book out of my face. I'm not some Bible basher. I'm not a Bible-thumping Christian. I like the way I feel when I go to church. We have really good programs there, and quite frankly, there's some real good-looking girls up front. You know, do the worship stuff, and oh, man, the one. Oh, boy. She wears those mini skirts up there, spike heels. And, ha, ha, yeah. Wicked devil. You're going to go to hell. You're going to go to a place like your church. See, you're already being, being prepared for it. And if you feel comfortable in that darkness with all those different things, the flames, the laser lights and things, and you see the smoke coming out of the stage and you hear the screams and things and the people, woo, woo, you know, yelling, uh-huh. And you like that separation from God. You don't like the standards of the scriptures. You don't want to have some Bible telling you how to live then uh, you're being prepared for hell. And I'll tell you, uh, you wouldn't actually enjoy heaven, a place of true worship of Jesus Christ and um, a place of light all the time and fellowship with the saints and the Word of God being magnified above everything else, including the name of God Himself, Psalm 138, verse 2. You wouldn't like a place like that. So if you want to stay in your uh, church building hell, then uh, go right ahead. But I'm praying that there are some of those, some of you out there that are listening to me that say, I'm hearing what this guy's saying. I've been feeling something's wrong. I need to get out of that. I pray you do. I pray you leave it before it's too late. Okay. Um, for those of you out there, uh, followers of this ministry, uh, one of the ways that you can help this channel, because we're shadow banned probably one of the worst shadow ban channels out there. You can't put links to my videos in on other channels and other videos and things like that. But what you can do is give titles of my videos. That's a good way that you can do that. Um, say, go to some video that's talking about whatever, go to some modern church video and say, hey, check out this sermon called Why Modern Churches Look Like Hell. Look it up. You know, do a search for this. All here on YouTube. Do things like that. Put titles there, not links, because then they just get you know, taken to a spam folder or whatever else, they just get blocked. But uh, we have to fight against these uh, algorithms and all the other stuff. And it's not just you know computer and artificial intelligence stuff. It's also people that fight against this ministry. Um, that's why we appreciate people's support. I can't do it without support. And thank you to all those out there that do support this uh, ministry financially. I am not monetized, as I've said many times. I just have to repeat that for newer viewers. I do not get any ad revenue from YouTube. 
Um, even, even if I was hooked up to that whole program, they would just be demonetizing all my videos because I say things that are controversial. So, um, but thank you to people out there that support us. Please do pray for us. That's important. And if your comments are being deleted, please don't blame me because I spend very little time going through comments. Okay, quite frankly, there's just too much else to do for me. Um, if your comments are being deleted anytime from about five o'clock in the afternoon till uh, the next day, about nine o'clock in the morning, if your comment disappears at all in that time, I'm not even at the office at that time. Okay, so I've seen that. I'll come into you know uh, work, go to the office, and um, and people say, why did you? why did you delete my comment? And I look at when their comment was left and it was sometime throughout the night. I'm not even there just to tell you how that works. So that's another thing that they do to try to frustrate you make you think that I'm narrow minded and bigoted and whatever else. Uh, the only comments I delete are if you use profanity or if you're posting links to heretical channels, I'm not for that. Um, or, you know, advertisements or things like that, that, you know, I'll delete those or if somebody's just really being, ridiculous and argumentative and they're causing problems, I'll delete those. But I delete very few comments. Okay, so please do not have your feelings be hurt if you get your comment delete if your comments deleted, it's not me doing it. And you know, I rely on my viewers out there to help me spread the word about this ministry. So that is going to be it. And uh thank you very much for watching and please get out of these modern church buildings. They're very wicked.